We've got the very latest on the Manchester United search for a new manager. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is gone. Michael Carrick picked up a great result, didn't he, in the week in the Champions League. What's the very latest? Yeah, look, it should be said first and foremost that United's primary focus is as per their plan, and, and that's hiring an interim manager until the end of the season. Now, I'm told, as it stands, Michael Carrick, who's in temporary charge, the temporary caretaker manager of Manchester United, he's expected to take charge of the team for the Super Sunday clash at Stamford Bridge against the leaders, Chelsea. Now, talks are ongoing with a number of candidates. Now, we're told Ernesto Valverde and Ralph Ranić are two of those who have been spoken to. Valverde, the former Barcelona manager, of course, and Ranić used to manage... Schalke, of course, and RB Leipzig. He's currently in an advisory role at Lokomotiv Moscow. Some reports are also suggesting that the former Lyon coach, Rudy Garcia, mm. is in the frame for the job as well. One thing I will say as well is that we've been told this morning that none of these names were being spoken to prior to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's departure, simply because of the high esteem that Solskjaer is held in at Manchester United and out of respect for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I mean, we saw in the statement, you could read between the lines, Manchester United did not want to sack Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. It was just the tipping point was the Watford result at Vicarage Road. So the plan for the club is to run a full process for whoever comes in next summer. And it's a process that will happen after the interim manager is uh, appointed. I would say two things to that. First of all, we mentioned Michael Carrick there. I just wonder if Michael Carrick wins at Chelsea on Sunday following up that win against Villarreal. Does he suddenly become in the frame for the interim role? As per the statement from Manchester United on Sunday, that's not the plan at the moment. He is just there on a caretaker basis ahead of the interim coming in. The thinking at Old Trafford is an interim manager until the end of the season would quickly add stability and momentum for the rest of the season. Secondly, the other point I would make is despite United's plan, they would still look at long-term high-profile candidates for the permanent manager if they were to become available now. We've seen interim managers get the gig. I mean, it's Taylor's all his time, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> interim manager comes in and does well and gets the, gets the gig long term. Well, Manchester United are uh, exactly. case in point exactly. with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Time and time again, isn't it? It's happened, happened before at other clubs as well. Um, so it'd be fascinating to see what, whether it's Carrick or, or someone else. It's certainly you would think whoever gets it to the end of the season is in the box seat for this search for the permanent successor in the summer. But uh, we're told, aren't we, that Maurizio Pochettino would be a high target, if not the number one target for the club, if they could get him. Any chance they could get him now? And if not, you know, is it going to be a case of that? That's who they're waiting for in the summer. Look, Maurizio Pochettino, we're told, is Manchester United's number one target for the long-term successor to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. We know that Maurizio Pochettino would be interested in the post. If he was to come mid-season, I think the onus would have to be on Manchester United to make their move. Because if you look at this from Paris Saint-Germain's perspective, they don't want to sack Maurizio Pochettino simply because of the compensation issue that is attached to it. You'll remember a year ago, they sacked Thomas Tuchel and they ended up having to pay over £5 million to Thomas Tuchel and his backroom staff. PSG, I think, are only likely to consider allowing Pochettino to go mid-season subject to two conditions. If a club, for example, Manchester United, were to pay the full compensation, which we believe to be in excess of €10 million, Euros, and number two, if they have a replacement in situ who could come in straight away to replace Pochettino. As for Pochettino himself, unsurprisingly, he's being asked the question about his future at Paris Saint-Germain, about his potential future at Manchester United. And he was asked those questions both before the Manchester City game and after Paris Saint-Germain lost to Manchester City last night. And this is what Pochettino has been saying this week. Rumours are there. And um, we need to live with that. My respect to my club, to Paris Saint-Germain, my respect to another club, um, 
what another club are doing in that moment is not my business. I'm not going to make the mistake to talk. I am so happy in Paris Saint-Germain. I am focused and to try to give my best. I was a player in Paris Saint-Germain. I love the club. I love the fans. It's a fantastic time uh, to be on the club. My contract is uh, 2023, you know. I am really happy in Paris, in Paris Saint-Germain. That is, is a fact. The player know very well our situation. We are living in a business that rumors uh, are there. I think that is not a, a thing to talk uh, about the rumors. Hmm. Interesting stuff publicly from Maurizio Pochettino. Privately, we're told that relations between Pochettino and the technical director Leonardo and Pochettino and officials at Paris Saint-Germain are very strained, are the words that have been described to me. And that's despite Paris Saint-Germain holding an 11 or 12 point lead at the top of the French league. So it seems to be at odds with the position that they're in in the league. And through in the Champions League as well. Exactly. They're through to the next, the, the last 16. They lost their unbeaten start, of course, to Manchester City last night. He's also been criticised, Pochettino, for not doing his news conferences in French, which hasn't gone down too well. It rings the bell, doesn't it? which hasn't gone down too well with, with the journalists. So the media have been critical of him and there's a strained relationship between Pochettino and the club. Furthermore, he gave a very revealing interview to L'Equipe last week. This is what Pochettino had to tell the French newspaper. He said, we did not come to Paris Saint-Germain to build a project ourselves, looking for things to develop our ideas or what we might need. We came here to adapt and win. That's very different. When PSG come for you, it is so that you adapt to the existing structure with the players recruited. Now, that seems at odds to how Mauricio Pochettino would want to work. If you remember, when Tottenham were at their pomp, they were described, that is Mauricio Pochettino's team. That hasn't been described in the same way when Paris Saint-Germain played. There's often criticism of the way they play and also the front three, as good as they are and as good as they can change a game in the matter of seconds, are they working as much as Maurizio Pochettino would want all 11 players in his team to work? Another source has told my colleague Paul Gilmore earlier on this week, this is quite significant, is they don't expect Pochettino to be the PSG manager for long. Then you have to ask yourself, define long. Is it mid-season or is it more likely to be in the summer when Manchester United have had Carrick in charge and then an interim manager in charge and then they'll refocus and regroup once the season ends?